My name is Daniel Gray. This has been my church for 50 years. I really hate to bring be the bearer of bad news, but because of the danger of COVID, we're going to have to go to entirely virtual again. We don't know for how long. But the statistics don't show any, any resolution soon. And so, this will be after this service. We will be doing virtual again, as we did before. Just five services ago. I'm really sorry. Please join me in the call to worship. Very good. Thank you. <laughs> Though storms rage around me, I will clothe myself with the whole armor of God. I will pass in the belt of truth about my face. I will place strength and determination as my shoes to aid me in my ministry and mission for God. I will take up the shield of faith, which I shall defend against evil ways. I will pray diligently at all times, offering prayers and supplication to God. And the salvation and the sword of the Spirit will accompany me on my journey. Be strong in the Lord, who provides for our every need. I my and trust in Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. Good morning, everyone. It's good to see you. Some new, some newer faces after the last five. <laughs> it's good to see some of you in person for the first time in so long. I'm Dondria, I'm the Praise Brand Leader here. Before we get started today, let's join together in our vision statement. Here in the heart of Beaverton, Christ calls us to feed our community, body, mind, and spirit. And now, let's, uh, before we move forward in our worship service, let's bow our heads together in prayer. Lord, be with us today as we gather in your name to worship. As we all well know, change is the only constant in life. But, you know, the last several years have been, well, they've been a lot, a really lot of change. And if anything, it seems to just be ramping up even faster. We know that we need help to navigate the world as it, as it changes around us. And, and we know that you are there by our side. Help us recognize your guiding hand, your love, your support, and help give us that love and support, or help us give that love and support to, to everyone around us. We have, to, we have to be able to do that, to share your message to give your love to those that we touch every day. Most of all, we ask that you be with us in all that we face going forward. In your name, amen.
Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Praise be to God that we got some rain, right? <laughs> All right, working fast, yeah. All right. Well, let us bow our heads in prayer. Loving God, we thank you for this rain. We thank you for the creation of everything that you have made in this world. We even thank you for even this five to six weeks that we have been together in person. We ask that you help those who need to be vaccinated or need to be educated about vaccination to please give them wisdom. We ask that you please be with those who are ill and really need your love to be with them, to hold them, to heal them. We ask that you continuously watch over us as we continuously seek for your strength, your mercy, and your grace. Lord, as we return to hybrid worship, we ask that you continuously strengthen this church. We ask that you continuously help us to encourage each other, love each other, and be with each other during these times. Continuously be with us, Lord, and help us to continuously glorify your name. As one church, let us recite the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory for it.
actually it's not a joke. The other day, my grandchildren, one of them looked at my shoe and said, Nana, there's grass growing in your shoe. I was like, wow, I really don't get out much, do I? <laughs> Today's reading is from Ephesians. It's from chapter 4. There's verses 17 through 24 and 31 through 32. This is from the New Living Translation. With the Lord's authority, I say this, live no longer as Gentiles do, for they are hopelessly confused. Their minds are full of darkness. They wander far from the life God gives them because they have closed their minds and hardened their hearts against Him. They have no sense of shame. They live for lustful pleasure and eagerly practice every kind of impurity. But that isn't what you learned from Christ. Since you have heard about Jesus and have learned the truth that comes from Him, throw off your old sinful nature and your former way of life, which is corrupted by lust and deception. Instead, let the Spirit renew your thoughts and attitudes. Put on your new nature, created to be like God, truly righteous and holy. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, harsh words, and slander, as well as all types of evil behavior. Instead, be kind to each other, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, just as God, through Christ, has forgiven you. Well, blessings to you all this morning, and may the Lord be with you. And also with you. All right. So, uh, this morning I wanted to share something that's been placed on my heart. Change. It's a word that has been used regularly in our lives. We are constantly asked to change as Christians. Physically, emotionally. Spiritually and mentally. If we think about our daily routine, every second is a moment of change. From the moment we wake up to the time we go to bed, change is inevitable. Look at what we have encountered for almost two years in the pandemic. From the Delta variant of COVID raging mandating mass protests, school districts making decisions over mass mandates that have created a stir, ongoing political protestings of those who are not willing to receive the vaccine, Asian hate crimes, Black Lives Matter, and other racial issues continue to increase. An earthquake off the coast of Alaska, and the problems in Afghanistan and Haiti. Every human being on earth has been forced to readjust their lifestyle. Humanity has and is continuously finding ways to adapt to these changes. Some of us quickly adapt to these changes, and some of us need time to accept these changes. But no matter what level of adaptation we are in, all of us are surviving through these seasons of changes that have brought discomfort and frustration in our lives. This pandemic has pushed all of us to change, whether we like it or not. And in today's letter to the Ephesians, written by Apostle Paul, Paul is appealing to the Ephesians for a changed way of life. A lifestyle with God and only God. Paul says to the Ephesians, With the Lord's authority, I say this, Live no longer as the Gentiles do, for they are hopelessly confused. Their minds are full of darkness. They wander far from the light God gives because they have closed their minds and hardened their hearts against Him. 
They have no sense of shame. They live for lustful pleasure and eagerly practice every kind of impurity. But that isn't what you learn about Christ. Now, most of us know that Paul was known as Saul the Pharisee. What you may not know, or some of you may know, is that some Pharisees became Christians during the 70 AD, but were still rooted in Jewish traditions and laws. Pharisees were focused on rules and rituals concerning purification. Before Paul, Saul the Pharisees was a set obsessed with rules and rituals. Now, when I say obsessed, I mean to the point that Saul the Pharisees was killing Christians that weren't following traditional Jewish practices. Paul says in Acts 22, verse 3 to 5, I am a Jew. I was born in the city of Taurus, in the country of Sicilia. When I was a young man, I lived here in Jerusalem. I went to Gamaliel's, Gamaliel's school, and learned all about the law of our early fathers. I worked hard for God, as you all do today. I worked hard and killed men and women who believe as I believe today. I put them in chains and sent them to prison. The head religious leaders and the leaders of the people can tell you this is true. I got letters from them to take our Jewish brothers in the city of Damascus. I was going there to put the Christians in chains and bring them to Jerusalem where they would be beaten. It wasn't until Saul was near Damascus when Jesus blinded him to chains. Jesus didn't ask him to change physically. He asked Paul to change mentally, spiritually, and emotionally by being baptized and repenting in the name of Jesus. At that moment, Paul had no choice but to change because Jesus stripped everything from him. Some of us might be feeling this way right now with everything going around, around us. It might feel like this pandemic is pushing us to change. So what does Paul's experience have to do with the letter, the letters to the Ephesians? Well, if you read most of Paul's letters, a good majority of them speak about change. Paul wrote about change also in Romans, 1st and 2nd Corinthians, Philippians, and Hebrews. Paul shared the essential part of his experience with the world the day Jesus appeared in Damascus and blinded him. Because after Paul received his sight back, he went to Damascus to share the good news of Jesus, and he was beaten and kicked out of town. Now, Paul could have went back into Damascus and murdered all the Christians that were treating him poorly. Instead, Paul decided to walk away and learn from Peter and the other apostles. Paul learned that change doesn't come easy, and those who hear the need to change weren't ready for change. So instead, Paul wrote these letters to each town to prepare and encourage them to change. If you read each letter carefully, Paul tells everyone that if you center yourself with Christ and accept his strength, have faith in him, and are willing to change your old habits, you will be able to overcome any obstacle that will come your way. This is why Paul says, since you have heard about Jesus and have learned the truth that comes from him, 
Throw off your old sinful nature and your formal way of life, which is corrupted by lust and deception. Instead, let the Spirit renew your thoughts and attitude. Put on your new nature, created to be like God, truly righteous and holy. Now, this may sound easier said than done, but if we take a step back and look in the Old Testament, the Israelites could not overcome the changes the Pharaoh enforced. The Israelites went from freedom upon the land of Egypt to being enslaved. The Israelites were barely able to survive the changes they were facing, and the only way they could overcome those changes was when they cried out to God. And if we fast forward to the Gospels, Jesus takes it a step further by speaking about an external change to an internal change by evolving the law of murder as anger. In Matthew 5, verse 21 to 22, which he says, You have heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not murder, and whoever murders will be liable to judgment. But I say to you that everyone who is angry with his brother will be liable to judgment. Whoever insults his brother will be liable to the council, and whoever says you fool will be liable to the hell of fire. So what am I saying? To survive seasons of change, it begins internally, not externally. And the only way to change internally is to turn to Jesus and build a deep relationship with Him. What, what would it look like if we took 10 minutes out of our day and prayed about one thing we wanted to change that made us feel insignificant? What if, what if we turn to Jesus for every little thing that has been bothering us instead of stressing about the coulda, shoulda, woulda of thoughts that ponder in our minds? Paul says to the Ephesians, get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, harsh words, and slander as well as all types of evil behavior. Instead, be kind to each other, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, just as God and Christ has forgiven you. What would each individual's life look like if we centered ourselves with Jesus and got rid of our negative emotions and thoughts? In my perspective, each individual would gain peace. And the peace that that one individual receives from Jesus will be passed on to the next person by encouraging and loving one another to overcome these challenging times. So surviving a season filled with unknown changes begins internally and ends communally. An unknown monk around 1100 AD wrote a short story called To Change the World. The monk said, when I was a young man, I wanted to change the world. I found it was difficult to change the world, so I tried to change my nation. When I found I couldn't change the nation, I began to focus on my town. I couldn't change the town. And as an old man, I tried to change my family. Now, as an old man, I realize the only thing I can change is myself. And suddenly, I realized that if long ago I had changed myself, I could have made an impact on my family. My family and I could have made an impact on our town. Their impact could have changed the nation, and I could
could indeed have changed the world. If we want to survive the changes in the world, we need to lean on Jesus and allow him to change us internally. But we can't preserve Jesus for ourselves. We need to share this with our families, friends, neighbors, and community. The world is struggling through this pandemic. And we as Christians have the answer to overcome any season of change. Now it won't happen overnight, but if we turn our focus on Jesus, He will lead the way. As we continue to embark in this chaotic world, Turn to Jesus and build your faith with Him. We need to pray wholeheartedly to ask for Jesus to change any negativity in ourselves so we may be light to others. We need to stop worrying about the materials of this world and focus on our faith because the only thing that will save us is Jesus. But the question we need to ask ourselves is, how is my relationship with Jesus? Have I been seeking him during this pandemic? And has it changed me internally? Because the world is pushing us to change, and the chaos around us has disturbed our inner peace. As we move back to online worship, I encourage everyone to join the fellowship group. I encourage everyone to join Joys and Concerns. None of us should be alone during these challenging times. And we should be sharing our burdens, praying for each other, encouraging each other, and helping each other through this hardship, through the power of Jesus. Everything around us will change. But in this church, all of us have each other. Let us continue to hold each other up, lift each other up, and pray for each other to overcome this pandemic. Let us pray. Loving God, your love never ends. When all else fails, you still are God. We pray to you for one another in our need and for all, anywhere, who moan with us this day. To those who doubt, give them light. To those who are weak, strengthen them. To all who have sinned, show mercy. To all who sorrow, give them your peace. Keep true in us the love with which you hold one another in us. In all our ways we trust you. And to you, with your church on earth and in heaven, we offer honor and glory now and forever. Amen.
term <coughs> shutting down of worship. Um, but that doesn't mean we are not going to continue serving our community and serving each other. Like Jefferson said, we will still be having joys and concerns. We encourage you to join us. We will be still having fellowship groups. So um, you, can, you can figure out you know, who those groups are, if they're restarting for fall. We can talk that through. I know ours is still continuing. Um, but you know, we are still a family. We are a church family. That doesn't change whether we're in this building or not. Um, also, we will be still serving our community. So we have a bunch of stuff going on next week. That being said, all of it outside. Um, we're having a COVID-19 vaccine clinic. We are having Wake Up Beaverton School Supply Drive and the Free Food Market all on the 26th of August. So if um, you are able to, um, let's see, do we still need, yes, we still need uh, volunteers to help with the vaccine clinic to help check people in. Um, that's from 1 to 6 on the 26th. So if you can talk to Pastor Jefferson and let him know if you're able or anyone, just just show up. Uh, <laughs> or, John, John, uh, or Joan, yes, to, to help uh, sign up people to get them checked into the vaccine clinic. That'd be awesome. We're also doing the free food market. That starts at noon as well, and or to set up, and the distribution of food starts um, at 2.30. Sharon can help with that, so if you want to talk to Sharon um, or, or just come and help, that's also great. Wake Up Beaverton is, this is our fourth year? Is this our fourth year that we're doing Wake Up Beaverton? So we'll be serving local school children who may not have access to school supplies, backpacks, whatever it is they need to start the school year, and they are starting the school year. Um, so that is from two to four on the 26th. We're, uh, we're still accepting donations for that uh, monetarily or um, physically with pens, pencils, and so on and so forth. Uh, there, there has been a list, I think it's on our website, but you can give the office a call or call Jefferson or uh, Sharon, and they can help you figure out what we need for that. We are stuffing those backpacks um, on Tuesday, the 24th, from 10 to 2, and Sharon can, can um, guide you that way as well. So for all of that, we really do need as many volunteers to help set up, tear down, and guide people as possible. So let uh, Sharon, Joan, or Jefferson know if you can help in any way with that. Um, also, because of COVID, we haven't been passing the offering plate. We, we much appreciate all of your donations of time, of finances. Um, the offering plate is in the center. As you go back, it's still available to do online. So if you can, you know, it, we, we really just appreciate all of your generosity. Um, the last thing on the list, I think, is that many of you will remember Diana Heinz. She was our choir director for Oh my goodness, 20 years, I think. Has it been that long? It might have been that long, at least 15. And before that, she was doing children's choir. She was always involved in the choir and the music program here. Diana passed away earlier this year, and we are holding her memorial service on September 4th at 3 o'clock. Um, I've been talking with her son to help uh, talk through some music that were some of Diana's favorites. So um, you are welcome to be here for that, um, to wish her family well. Uh, she was a very important member of this congregation. So we uh, hope you can join us for that, or you know, it, it, even just send the family a note. If you'd rather just drop a, a note by, you can do that as well and, and not be here in person. So um, I think that's all I need to talk about. And I will turn it back over to Pastor Jackson. You know, before I send this forth, um, Sarah and I were talking about Wake Up Beaverton and how it first started. And it's because of this church. You know, we had a vision, and we all came together and scrounged up 
the little money that we had when we served 200 people. Now, now we get donations from other churches and other nonprofits, and even the city. And we now are able to continue this continuously for many years to come. And the city is, and the people, not the city, but the people of Beaverton are very appreciative of this. And I tell them all the time, well, it started from this church. It started from this church. We gathered what we had. And because of your heart, that heart is now given to this community. So I thank this church for believing in this vision and helping the community. Thank you for all that you do. And let's send this forth. Go out and make known the mystery of the gospel. Keep alert and pray at all times. Draw strength from God's power. And so stand firm against all that would corrupt you. And may God arm you with truth and righteousness. May Christ Jesus give you words of spirit and life. And may the Holy Spirit draw you near to God's presence and bless you with honor and grace. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, amen. Mm -hmm.